I've recently been exploring all the contrast filters and Nick color effects, and today is part three. Today we'll be looking at the tonal contrast filter. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Today it's going to be the tonal contrast filter found in Nick Color Effects Pro. So far we've looked at the Pro contrast filter, the contrast only filter, and today it is the tonal contrast filter. They're all very unique and very useful in photo editing. I hope you're enjoying this video series on these uh, contrast filters. My goal is to eventually cover all 55 filters found in color effects. And this could be a great resource guide for you to go back and look at. If you think this is something you want me to do, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you don't yet own Nick Collection 5, I'll have affiliate links in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you over to where you can purchase uh, the Nick Collection 5. And when you do that, I make a small commission and this helps me to keep these videos coming your way. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And go ahead and click that notification bell while you're at it. And then every time I put a new tutorial out, you'll be notified. I want to thank you all for viewing the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It's good to have you aboard. And thanks for all your comments and suggestions. Keep them coming. It really helps me out. And thanks for using my affiliate links also. Thank you. Did you know you can use Color Effects Pro as a standalone app? I want to show that to you today. I just opened up Color Effects Pro. And you'll notice here it says drag and drop your picture here. Or use Command plus zero to open up your image. Or you could come up here to File and click Open. And your file browser comes up. And then you can just click on your image and click Open. And it tells me I'm working on a JPEG file. If you work on a TIFF file, you could come back and resume editing on it later. But you can't do that on a JPEG. I'm just working with the stock image today, by the way. And I'll just click OK. Now, you'll notice right now I'm on all. I'm seeing all 55 filters in here. But you see the start images. These are my favorite uh, filters. And if you click on favorites, It'll just show you just your favorite filters. And Tonal Contrast is absolutely one of my favorites. And it's right here. But you see this little uh, triangle here? If you click it, there's like different uh, presets in here that you could use. You can also use your presets down here in your preset list. Uh, your custom presets. And I have a custom preset for this filter. And I'm going to recommend that you make one for yourself. And you'll see why here in a second. But right now, I'm just going to click on Tonal Contrast. And when I do, you can see it's added the Tonal Contrast filter. Now, if I click right here, the little checkbox, you can see there's the before and there's the after. You can also click this Compare button and see the before and after if you like. But when I'm only using one filter, it's just as convenient just to click off this little checkbox here, Before and After. But it adds a default setting here. Now, I made a preset where I zeroed these all out because I like to start with nothing on there. But it's really okay to work right from here. Like you can dial back the highlights, midtones, and shadows, whatever you want to do. And I'll get into what that does here in a sec. But if I go down here, see where it says custom, and you'll notice I have a tonal contrast, no adjustment setting here. So I'm going to click that. And now you'll see they're all zeroed out. To save a preset, after you've zeroed everything out, all you have to do is come down here and click Save Preset, give it a name, and click Save, and then it will end up living in your custom presets, okay? I'm just going to cancel this for now, but I highly recommend that you make yourself a preset with everything zeroed out. That way you can get a clean slate and decide which way you want to go with a certain image. That's a good tip in my opinion. Let's take a look and see what Nick has to say about this filter. This filter lets you modify the textures and details of the photo efficiently. So we're going to be working with textures and details. So that's a little bit different than what we've been looking at with the other contrast filters. We can work with highlights, control the level of contrast applied to the light tones in the photo. We can work with just midtones, controls the level of contrast applied only to the midtones, and also shadows, control the shadow contrast. There's also a saturation adjustment, and then there's a contrast type. Now, this is going to show up in a drop down menu. Use this drop down menu to select one of the five contrast types available. Now, we're going to look at all that. It's a 
pretty interesting filter and one I think you're going to be using a lot after you really understand how it works. I haven't really been dealing with control points, but all of these filters have control points that you can work with. I personally don't use them. If you want to see a video about control points, let me know in the comments section below and I'd be happy to make one. But I generally work out of Photoshop and I'm a TK8 plugin for Photoshop user and I love to work with luminosity masks and that's really the way I do my local adjustments. But most of the time you won't even need a control point with this filter or a luminosity mask, but sometimes you do if you really, again, want to localize a filter adjustment. What I'm really trying to achieve with this series is really help you to understand how to use these different filters. One thing I want to say about presets, you may come up with a signature look that you might like to apply to several images in a set of images. That's where presets really can come in handy. So once you've come up with a formula with your adjustments here, save it out as a preset and give it a unique name that you could come back to and easily apply it to another or several images and then all those images would have a unique look. Now let's go ahead and take this filter for a spin. Tonal contrast, highlights. Now the highlight slider will only target highlights, so we'll add contrast to highlights only. If I drag this to the right, you can see it's only targeting highlights. Even if I drag it the whole way to the right, it still doesn't look that bad. But don't forget, you can also drag this to the left and reduce contrast because there's a bit of a haziness above here, and what if I wanted to maintain that hazy look? In this case, I think I do, so if I drug, drug this to the right, I'd be adding contrast up there, but I can reduce contrast as well. Don't forget that, it's not only for adding contrast to highlights, you can also take contrast away, and that's an important tip. Now let's work on midtones. We're gonna get to this contrast type, but right now it's on standard. This is the default setting. A basic standard contrast adjustment, but we'll get here in a little bit. But now let's work on midtones. I think I want the midtones of the image to have some more contrast. So let's take this midtone slider to the right. Now again, it's only targeting the midtones. But you notice something here. You see how these midtones are starting to get more detailed looking? Let's go into two to one so you can really see it. And we can even come here and go into three to one. Okay, so watch these. I'm gonna take this midtone slider and pull it up even more. See all that extra detail that's coming out? That's what Nick are referring to when they say bring texture out. Let me go back to fit. I find you can be pretty aggressive with these sliders and that doesn't look bad. It's probably overdone. So let me just start to pull it back. Maybe somewhere around there. Now let's click on this checkbox. Let's see, here's the before and here's the after. I've maintained my haziness up here but I've also pulled out some detail in the midtones by increasing midtone contrast. Next, we're gonna do shadows. Notice one thing, when I saved my preset, I had this at minus one. I just caught that now. I went back and resaved my preset with this at zero. I'm sure somebody out there caught that, but I'm glad I caught the error during the video. Now, with shadows, we're only gonna target shadow areas, all these darker areas in here. Some of the darker areas in the mountain and in the water. So if I drag this to the right, See the shadows start to deepen up? Let's be aggressive and take it the whole way over. See how they get really dark? Now I can also decrease contrast. Once I hit the zero point and drag to the left, I'm going to decrease shadow contrast. But I want more contrast, so I don't want too much, but I'm gonna go right about here. I think that looks natural. Now here is the overall before and here is the after. So I think it looks really pretty good at this point. And as you can see from the Nick note, this filter lets you modify the textures and details of the photo efficiently. And again, here's the before, and here's the after. Do you notice a lot more texture in there? Now don't forget you have an opacity slider. You can pull this back just to ease up on your adjustment. If you felt you went a little overboard rather than adjusting each one of these sliders individually. Now we also have a saturation. We could decrease saturation or we can increase saturation. And I think I do want a little bit of a saturation increase. Now here's the overall before and here's the after. Now let's take a look at the different contrast types, but also don't forget, 
If you're blocking up shadows or blowing out highlights, you have highlight and shadow protection here too. And now to the drop down menu. Right now we're on standard. If you click right here, the menu opens up. And all you have to do is hover over these different names and it'll show you the effect. Now let's start out with high pass. Now high pass is a high pass filter and a high pass filter will tend to sharpen your image. So you're seeing a more sharpened look here. If you want something a bit sharper then the high pass is a good way to go. Now I would recommend starting out with high pass if that's what you're going for and then base your adjustments off that contrast type. Now we have fine Fine is just like, let's say, not quite as strong as an effect as standard. Now, notice where my cursor is. Right now, I'm on standard, but if I like drag it into fine, you can see there's fine. Here is standard. I don't know really how to describe it, but I would say not quite as strong as standard. So if you want a little more texture, but not too much, you may want to try fine. Now, let's take a look at balanced. Let me hover over balanced. Now we're comparing standard when I hover over balanced. It's more of a, a subtle HDR look, more dynamic range in my opinion. And then if we go down to strong, now we're comparing standard here to strong. Strong looks like a really intense HDR look. Now I don't like this look, but you know what? Sometimes you may want to like bring the more detail out in those mountains. And this is where a local adjustment comes into play. So you may want to work with control points, or if you're working with this as a plugin for Photoshop, you may want to use selection tools. And if you're a TK8 plugin for Photoshop user, you may want to use luminosity masks in conjunction with Photoshop selection tools. But I find I get better results when I'm working with Photoshop with selection tools and luminosity masks versus control points. But that's just my opinion. If you have a different idea about control points, if you think, hey, I get really good results with the control points, let me know in the comments section below. But control points have really gotten better because now you can do luminance and chrominance along with control points. And again, if you want to see a control point video, leave a comment in the comment section below. Now, I feel I'm happy with the overall adjustments I made in the standard mode. So now we're ready to save out this image. And remember, I started out as a standalone app with Color Effects Pro. But let me verify by unchecking tonal contrast to see a before and here's an after. Yeah, I'm good to go. To save this out, just come up here to File and click Save. And you can see it's processing the image and this comes back up, you know, things to know before working with a JPEG. Well, just click OK and that goes away and the image will be saved. But notice that the filters go away. I generally don't work as a standalone app and I was kind of like, why did my filter go away? But I guess that's just the way Nick does it. When you click save, whatever your file format was, it'll save it out right on top of that file that you brought in. So that file will actually change. But if I would have went to file and went to save image as, click right here. In fact, I can even do it now and tell it where you want it to go. And also, if you click this drop down, you have your choice between TIFF and a JPEG. So I could really save a TIFF out of this image if I wanted to as well. I'm just going to click cancel, but I just thought you might like to know that. Well, there it is. That was the Nick Tonal Contrast Filter found in Color Effects Pro. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!